are back with a heated conversation over book banning in schools and public libraries. My next guest, Nadra Ostrom, filed a complaint in the Burbank, California School District in 2020 after learning that a 13-year-old black girl had allegedly been the target of racial attacks by multiple fellow students who used the N-word, something those students said they learned from reading, a required book that was part of the school's English curriculum. Nadra also discovered that during class, Teachers were having students read passages from the book out loud, including those that contain racial slurs. With the help of other parents and teachers, Nadra was able to get that book, Roll of Thunder, Hear Me Cry, Hear My Cry, and four other books removed from the school's curriculum, including To Kill a Mockingbird, Huckleberry Finn, Decay, and Of Mice and Men. Please welcome Nadra Ostrom to the show. How are you? Thank you. Now, Obviously, there will be people who say you're throwing the baby out with the bathwater. Sure. These are classics. Sure. Um, how do you explain that? Well, the situation that we had in Burbank was because it was stemming from students. So it wasn't as if myself and these other parents said, hey, we don't want these books. But we had a history of kids actually making the complaints and being dismissed. And we had a, um, a DEI committee form, Diversity, Equity, Inclusion. And there were several parents um, of black students. And they talked about the traumas that their kids were having. And so what we actually asked for was a pause on the books. So like with Huck Finn, the people who use the N-word are the villains in the book. Right. They are, so it teaches in context the ugliness of the word and the destruction of slavery and the destruction of our culture. Right. So that's why I think people are wondering, by doing this, you're removing James Baldwin, potentially, Alice Walker. You know, where does it end? Well, Toni Morrison, I mean. For one, those were never on the required list, for one. But the other situation is that um, what I would say is if your child is the one that's coming home and saying, um, you know, these kids are calling me the N word, telling me that, um, you know, oh, my, my grandfather owed, owed your, I mean, owned your grandparents and you owe me a dollar. And then you go to the administration for help and they say, well, you know, they learned it in a book, so there's nothing we can do. I mean, that's like do. in history lessons. So under that premise, teaching, for example, slavery would allow for a kid to say, my grandfather owned your grandfather. So do we not teach slavery? No, absolutely we teach it. But what are we, what's going on in the classroom? Um, why, we need to have some sort of safeguards. So the conversations are important. The conversations they need, we need to have these conversations, but we need our teachers to be supported to be able to have the conversations in a way that they're protecting students. Is there they a way say to do that, that without harmed. banning books that, in context? Yeah, I, <laughs> I believe that there probably is a way to do that. But how do we get that? How do we make that happen? It doesn't just like, oh, let's, you know, it doesn't happen overnight. Like, we need to support our teachers. We need to bring resources into the school district so that that can happen. Because think about it, if you are, um, a teacher and, a, and a, student, a black student comes to you and says either um, this is what I'm facing, this is what this student's doing, and their automatic inclination is to be dismissive or to not... But I think those are two separate issues, right? Preparing teachers to deal with that because all we know, they learned it in hip-hop, which, by the way, I listen to. We don't know where they learned the N-word that, that they weaponized, but isn't that a part of the conversation to teach people how it was used, how it's written about, and in the context well, that they can learn. Because I, let me tell you this. A 13-year-old child, my heart goes out to her, but how do we convince her and teach her that they can say that word all day long? That's not you. I think what you do is okay. that you have some accountability for yeah. the students who are doing. What are you teaching yeah. her when she's saying, these kids are doing this to me, and you don't have any consequences for the other yeah, kids. What, what, what is think, that lesson yeah, teaching and I think to that child? Point. That's teaching her that she doesn't have value. And what I'm saying is our kids do have value. Of 
and they and they need to be respected. We are entitled to dignity. Yeah. And I think what happened here, it sounds like, and I wish we had more time, two different conversations because the actors of this, if this is true, should be kicked out, not the book, in my opinion. And that's what I feel. But I respect what you've done. You're active parents. Just like I told the other parents before you, we don't have to agree, but we will always have respect, and hopefully that's the lesson from some of this. I hope so. Thank you so much.